Let's look at where a peritectic phase diagram comes from. When three phases are involved, it's possible that a eutectic phase diagram results, or a eutectic point, rather. But it's also possible, if we have three phases present, that a peritectic transformation can occur. So just like before, we need to consider delta G mix for these three phases. And it's really just a different configuration on these curves that results in a paratectic phase diagram forming as, or a paratectic point rather, compared to a eutectic point. So let's look then at the G versus X curves, which results in a paratectic reaction. So these show delta G mixing versus X2, again for three phases, alpha and liquid and beta. And the reference states are being accounted for. That's what these bars are on the sides. The reference state for component one is alpha. The reference state for component two is beta at all of these temperatures. And we have decreasing temperature 1300, 1205, 1100 and 900 and as before we just compare which of these curves gives the lowest delta G mixing if the curves cross that's a sign that we should be using the common tangent construction to identify the compositions of the two phases which are in equilibrium at any point so on this first diagram we have the alpha phase with the lowest free energy for a little bit and then over here the liquid but in between there, the common tangent construction shows that we have a two-phase region where the equilibrium compositions of the alpha and liquid phase are given by these compositions. Now, what happens here is that the beta curve is also starting to come down, but unlike what happened in the eutectic case where we had alpha on one side, liquid in the middle, and beta on the other side, we now have the liquid curve coming down on the side instead of coming down in the middle. And apparently, paratectic somehow means from Greek that this is melting on the side. And that's just showing that the liquid is, curve is on the side and not in the middle, whereas eutectic means melting in the middle. So this has the liquid over on the side. We end up with this common tangent construction where all three phases can coexist only at this particular temperature and with these particular compositions essentially. As we decrease the temperature further, we now end up with a region where the alpha phase is the lowest free energy. Then we have a region where the beta phase alone has the lowest free energy, and then where the liquid phase alone has the lowest free energy. But we can do two different common tangent constructions to find a region where alpha and beta phases are in equilibrium, and then a second one where the beta and the liquid phases are in equilibrium over here. And so this point right here, we couldn't really see it on the previous uh, Part of the phase diagram, but this is the eutectic point right here where I'm circling. So this is the eutectic temperature or paratectic temperature and paratectic point. And then if we keep decreasing the temperature, now the liquid curve is out of the picture and we just have alpha and beta phases uh, forming together. So let's look at a couple of examples of phase diagrams which show paratectic reactions. And I guess I should um, point out here that the sort of signature of the paratectic is that on cooling, you go from alpha, a solid, and a liquid to a different solid phase. So this is the reaction which is occurring right here, right? We're going from the alpha and the liquid into the beta phase. So let's look at... So this is the phase diagram for arsenic and phosphorus. 
these purple regions are the single phase regions and let's just label these as alpha and beta for now. This phase diagram actually has two paratectic reactions. One of them is here and one of them is here. So in this reaction here we have the alpha phase and the liquid phase transforming to the arsenic phosphide phase. And for this one here we have the arsenic phosphide plus the liquid transforming into the beta phase. So it's possible to have multiple paratectic reactions occurring in one phase diagram. And let's look at an example of another phase diagram where there are even twice. This is for the aluminum titanium system. And you can see there are tons of single phase regions on here. This phase diagram comes from the ASM alloy phase diagram center, which we have access to here at Boise State. And one thing that's nice about their phase diagrams is that they color all of their single phase regions in purple, so you can see this. So we have a number of paratectic points here, including some paratectoid reactions, which just means there's not a liquid present. So let's see if we can find them. So here is one of those reactions where we go from a two-phase region to a single-phase region. Here's another one right here. Here's a third one right here. Here's a fourth one right here. Here's another one I can't even fit the arrow on, but right there. So these are all paratectic or paratectoid reactions. We also can find a number of eutectic reactions on here. We have a eutectic here, and we have another eutectic over here. So these are some examples of the paratectic reaction and where we can find it on a phase diagram.